This video is about identifying the process used to make a product based on a visual inspection of the product itself. And we're going to be talking about four different processes, that is injection molding, blow molding, rotational molding and thermoforming or vacuum forming. Now injection molding, the characteristics of this is that the shape will usually be very complex and three dimensional because it's really the only technique you can use to make very complex shapes. You might also find that within the shape you might have internal curves and fixings for other components in, including things like snap fits. So if you imagine something like a remote control has a top and bottom and they kind of snap together then you'd need injection molding to allow this sort of complexity. Now blow molded products have hollow shapes with one end sealed while the other remains open and they're often things like bottles or drums for holding chemicals. In blow molding the neck of the bottle is usually smaller than the outside measurements of the body and you can apply things like surface decorations if you've got embossed details or lettering or textures on the bottle. You might also have screw threads incorporated into the neck to add the lid on. Now the other signs of blow molding is you will see a sprue, this is obviously at the bottom of the product where the plastic has kind of been snipped off if you like and you will generally see a seam line going around the outside of the product to show where the two halves of the mould have been joined together. With rotational moulding you'll notice that all products are hollow. You will not see a sprue because unlike blow moulding injection moulding the plastic has not been inserted in instead it starts as polymer granules that are rotated around what you will probably see is a line or a seam line going around where the two mould halves have been joined together as with blow moulding and injection moulding you can also add details now products that are thermo formed and also vacuum formed obviously start off as sheet materials. So this is the first thing you should obviously look for. What you'll also maybe detect on closer inspection is there's a degree of stretching. So you might find some areas where there is a thicker part of the plastic than the other as stretching occurs over deeper moulds or larger moulds. You will not see sprues because as I say there is no sort of injected plastic or plastic but you will see where the excess plastic has probably been cut and removed from the sheet by the use of something like a gerbil or rotary cutting disc. Another thing you should look for in any sort of plastic product is the international symbols or SPI codes as they're sometimes called on the underside or somewhere on the product which is generally away from view. Now these codes range from number one for polyphyl terephthalate all the way up to number seven for polymers that don't fit into the other kind of categories and it's just a way for recycling this product easier. It allows the consumer to know what the type of material is and it also allows these to be sorted into the right areas so that they can be recycled effectively without causing contamination to the overall load when they are collected.